When we were pregnant with John, we had two daughters uh, who were 12 and 10 at the time. Uh, John was a long time in the making. We were really excited um, when we finally fell pregnant with him and the girls were really excited. So when he was little, he never lifted up his head. So for me, that was a, a bit of a red flag um, just to show his simple strength because I'm sure my daughters had done that by that stage and when he wasn't lifting his head I'd started to feel a bit worried and I still remember the day that we were told I think your son has spinal muscular atrophy and all those little details will be embedded in my brain I think forever because it went from nothing's wrong nothing's wrong to something is very wrong I guess um, for me what the doctors were saying just kept escalating so first we were told um, your son will not walk then he won't sit then he will die before his first birthday and it just each kind of impact really hit as this got more and more extreme a worst occasion for me was an interview we had where a, a medical professional said they'd understand if we chose not to get treatment and just trust in prayer or just take him home and love him until until he's gone and that gave me an idea of how bad it must be for, for medical people to say we won't judge you if you just let it go and that's like that's when I knew okay that's how bad it is yeah. soon after diagnosis we heard on the grapevine about gene therapy and other families in Australia who were hoping to get that for their child. Um, when you look it up, you could see in America they had amazing results um, for children who beforehand wouldn't have been able to do a whole lot and now some of them were even walking. Um, so that was just amazing. For us, I still remember the phone call that we got saying it was going to happen and I just sat on the kitchen floor and cried because it was so surreal thinking that our son was going to have this really new treatment that could really turn his life around. It was like our boy was stuck inside his own body. He wanted to do things you could see with his eyes. He was so expressive that he was just trapped inside this almost paralysed kind of body and having the gene th therapies given him that chance to actually start to move and explore the world and do those things that you know he was so wanting to do. So in John's case it possibly hasn't been as efficacious because he'd already had some atrophy before he got the treatment where gene therapy it doesn't cure uh, atrophy that's already happened but it halts it so it is very exciting for cases where kids can be screened earlier on and picked up and have that gene therapy at birth or very soon after birth. I feel like um, our story is just one in the road and we've come at a particular point where what John's been through and um, how he's responded to gene therapy is really an important piece of where the research is going and what needs to be done next to keep making it better for future children. It felt really valuable to talk to the scientists um, and see what was happening behind the scenes. I found it heartening. These are all science types, numbers, <laughs> doing stuff in labs, but they were really happy to meet John. They were really invested in him as a person and the positive influence that this treatment is having at a, you know, at a personal level. I think growing up, having done Genes for Genes at school and knowing the name, being one of the statistics is something you never think will happen to you or even to someone you know. And having started this journey, the number of people who we have met along the way and seen actually this stuff really makes a difference. There's lots of us out there and you just never know who's going to be affected. So this kind of research, this kind of fundraising, this kind of awareness is so important and you might not even 
know that it's going to affect someone you know, but it probably will one day.